How did you get into boxing? First got into boxing at, well no, when I was probably eight or nine, my dad had a set of keys to the, my old amateur club, actually, and say, he'd open up a little bit early for the lads and that, and I'd just sort of go because there was no one really to mind me. Um, so yeah, I'd say, yeah, it's probably about eight, something like that, and sometimes on a Sunday he'd open up and all my cousins would go in and I'd beat them all up and stuff like that. But um, I went back proper just before I was 11, because I think like most kids, you know, you're playing football and I was, I was super competitive, I was into all sports and I knew you had to be 11 to fight. So I went back proper just before my 11th birthday and um, I was a bit, I would say natural, but yeah, I thought I've already had the basics. So within a few months, medical card and I was fighting, but I knew from the very first session I was, I was hooked and that's what I wanted to do. That become the number one sport over at the time, I football, I was a decent cross country runner. Athletics, yeah, that was how I got into it. Favourite boxer of all time? You know what, there's a few. I think I'm a massive Salvador Sanchez fan. Massive Salvador Sanchez fan. I am with him. Um, I believe so many more people have talked about him and he didn't lose his life at such an early age. I've watched, you know, when I watch stuff on him and some of his old fight, I think he was brilliant. Brilliant he was. And uh, so I'm a massive fan of his. More one who sort of more people would know obviously Sugar Ray Leonard, huge fan. And I met Sugar Ray Leonard um, a few years back, and sometimes they say about never meeting your idols, but he was just, he was, um, he was great. He was, he was just like a cool guy. He looked dead well, and he was just sort of everything you wanted him to be. Obviously, great stories and an unbelievable fighter as well. And I know, like you say, you'd put Floyd Mayweather in any era, era, but I'd, um, I'd pick Leonard to beat Floyd. Hardest opponent I've faced. Um, do you know what? I mean, obviously, losing to Leonard is the best fighter. Of, he's um, the best fighter that I've uh, faced. But actually, hardest fight. I've got a few. Um, Kevin Farrell fight was very hard, and uh, the Gavin Reese fight. Gavin Reese fight. There's been there's been a handful of them, um, but you know they're two that really stand out. Especially the Gavin Reese fight. Um, Physically, sort of, he was very strong as Kieran was, and you know, fast dance was a tough fight. And I remember after the fight, just being knackered for days and days. It was one of them where I'm always sort of taking over, even after a fight, I'll do little bits, but I just wanted to rest after that fight, so yeah, possibly that. Greatest career moments or dates? Um, either winning a world title, obviously, achieving a lifelong dream or defending a world title because of very few people give us a chance winning that fight against this mob also so one of those two fights situation with the Lomachenko fight um, I think it's sort of what everyone else knows really you know if you look on social media first bids are due in two days time he was granted Permission for the unification fight, Richard Comley. Richard Comley's hand's not going to be right in time, so the next opponent should be me uh, for him. And there's an April the 12th date, which is a possibility in Los Angeles. Or if it goes to first bids Wednesday, Eddie, and Eddie wins the bids, it might end up being later that month or a month later. Um, but America looks most likely. Do I have a feeling the experience of fighting Linares will set you in good stead of facing Lomachenko? Um, yeah or not, I mean, knowing the way that all styles are different, um, a lot of it's in preparation, but in, I see him as an elite fighter, as uh, Lomachenko is, and do you know, I've fought for those titles that are on the line before, I won't be overawed by the occasion whatsoever, so, when you look at like that, I've, but I've, for the last few years I've been in big fights. I know Lomachenko is bigger than any of them, um, but yeah, I believe you know that that stands me in good stead. And Linares is very, very clever, like Lomachenko. You've seen it in the fight. Uh, there was times where they was out thinking each other. It was um, a real great fight, and you know, one to watch um, for uh, you know, for the boxing purist. So yeah, I do believe that he'll help me. What did I learn from Milanaro's defeats? Um, again, it was sort of from the defeats, you just. I've got no excuses there because 
you know, I don't know if you can ask me, and certainly the second time out, when I lost that, I lost uh, convincing for the first time in my career. Um, I was, you know, I got well beat, but it's just, just going away and just looking at new ways to improve. That's what I looked at, I looked at, you know, I thought I brought my best, my, my, my A game that day, and it wasn't good enough, so I know that I've got to improve my A game and also about having a backup plan. Um, when something's not working, now you might have to switch a little bit easier, and that's probably sort of the one criticism from that fight. You can't just rely on heart and guts against those top level fighters. How do I prepare mentally and tactically for the challenge of Lomachenko? Um, mentally, are you prepare like every fight that it's uh, the biggest fight of your career, even though this one, you know, really is. But you know, you prepare tactically. It's, um, it's a tricky one because Lomachenko does stuff that we've seen from very few fighters before, and he'll do stuff that you can't really learn. A lot of it with him is, is natural, and he's such a thinker. He's thinking, you know, one, two, three steps ahead. So you've got to sort of anticipate that, but also you've not got to, in my opinion, you've not got to overthink that. You've got to worry about what you're going to do as well. You worry about what Lomachenko is going to do all the time, then he's going to have a field day and he's going to pick holes in you. So that's what um, preparing is. Obviously studying him and studying him. What he does so well, which he does do a lot of things well, and what we believe, what we can you know, expose and give him trouble with uh, to swing the fight in our favour is uh, what we study and what we work on. What do you see differently in Lomachenko compared to the 43 opponents you have faced? I've just covered a bit of that, like sort of with it. He, he does things that you not, like you couldn't teach, or sometimes you wouldn't teach some of the things. He takes risks, but he gets away with them because he's been so good, you know, because of the way he thinks. Feet are unbelievable. Very, very clever. So you see differently, it makes it harder to prepare for him than sort of anyone else is. There's very little textbook about Lomachenko. So that's, yeah, that's what I see, what I see different really. And I'll, listen, there's, a, there's plenty of footage out there on him. But um, as you know, we can, we can mix it up, but I can't worry too much about what he's gonna do all the time, because I don't just want to be following him around the ring, waiting for what he's gonna do all the day, because they love that. Um, question, is a potential fight with domestic rival Luke Campbell on your radar? Of course, me and Luke's a good fight, uh, but at the minute, I've just, obviously, my only concern is Lomachenko, but domestic showdown, great Luke Hyler, I don't see um, how it wouldn't be a good fight, so, yeah, it's, it's some of that, of course, you know, it, it could happen in the future. Luke, I'm not sure what the situation is with the BBC, obviously, Luke deserves his shot, so I don't, um, I don't really know there, but, yeah, I would be open to it, of course I will, if, um, you know, we come around and, be great to for all the titles, but like you say, I'm not. It's not something at the minute, but certainly in the future, a good um, domestic showdown for world titles is always good. My name's Anthony Crawler, and thank you for all your questions. Sounds. Thank you.